Mobile Geek's coverage of IFA 2014 is powered by Asus and Mercedes-Benz. Hi everybody, this is Stu from Mobile Geeks and we're here at IFA 2014 in Berlin and we've just acquired recently this Huawei SN Mate 7 device here and I thought it'd be a great idea to compare it to the latest and greatest tablet from Samsung which is of course the Galaxy Note 4. This is the Galaxy Note 4 on the right here and if you compare it here to the uh, to the SN7, we'll try and get them lined up, you can see that the SN7 is actually a pretty pretty much a bigger device, about a few millimeters taller. That's not surprising really because what we have here in the SN7 is a very large 6 inch screen. On the Galaxy Note 4 of course we have a slightly smaller 5.7 inch screen. If you look at these two screens also you might, you might notice that I think it's fair to say we've got the brightness cranked up to full on both devices but the Samsung screen is a bit brighter. That's probably not so surprising because this is a super AMOLED, the kind of screen that Samsung have been famous for for the last couple of years and they're probably the brightest, clearest and best looking screens on the market. Look at these viewing angles, they're absolutely fantastic. The Huawei over here has a uh, IPS LCD made by JDI which is Japan Display Incorporated. I'll just check that the brightness is in fact on full, yep it is right up, cranked up to the Max. And as you can see, it's a very nice display, good viewing angles, but it doesn't quite have the brightness that we see on the Super AMOLED here. It's also quite important to note that on the Samsung we have a QHD, there's 2560 by 1440 resolution. So this is a very high resolution device. This is the as we would say, it's kind of the future of smartphones. It's one of a few phones that have this. Another example would be the LG G3 that we've looked at before. But over here in a Huawei, what we've got is a regular kind of full HD. So this is 1080p, 1920 by 1080, which has its advantages. It will, if they were used, less power than a QHD and also get a little bit less hot. Now inside these two devices, we have two quite different platforms. The Samsung here uses the, oh, somebody's trying to steal something. On the Samsung we have a Snapdragon 805. This is the very, very best uh, system on chip from Qualcomm. And it's actually a, a, a quad-core chip which is clocked at 2.7 gigahertz. That's backed by the brand new Adreno 4, uh, 440 GPU. So this is pretty much the most powerful CPU on the market. What we have here on the Huawei is a very different kind of beast. It's actually a homegrown, in-house developed uh, system on chip called the High Silicon Kirin 925. Now this is a, a, a little bit different uh, kind of device, uh, sorry, uh, platform rather, in that it's octa-core. It uses the big little architecture from ARM and it actually uh, has four A15 cores clocked at 1.8 gigahertz and four uh, kind of smaller low power cores, uh, the A7 Cortex cores clocked at 1.3 gigahertz. Now we haven't had much of a chance to really test the performance on these but I'm, I'm going to go out and guess that the Snapdragon will outperform the Kirin. But hey, we'll see. We haven't had time to benchmark these in full. We did look at the uh, the Note 4 here and we tried to benchmark it, but it seems that these devices at the show are not optimized. Some of the cores are actually uh, clocking themselves down, kind of underclocking. Now, in terms of memory, you're also, on the Samsung here, you're getting three gigabytes of RAM, whereas on the Huawei, you're only getting two gigabytes of RAM. In terms of uh, system storage, this is a 16 gigabyte storage with a micro SD slot available also in one of these two SIM slots, so we have dual SIM here. One of them also supports a micro SD, whereas on the Samsung you do also have micro SD support, but it kind of works, it goes in the back here, this removable cover, it slips in that way. But I might add that actually there is a gold edition of the Huawei, which is a bit more expensive and will cost you, I think, $600, $599, and that will be 32 gigabytes and 3 gigabytes of RAM. So very bling blingy, I feel like, for the, for the rich mainlanders who want a gold version that has absolutely everything. Um, over, we'll get to price a little bit more in a moment. Let's just look at the cameras. On the front here you have a 5 megapixel with a light sensor, whereas on the Samsung over here we have unusually a 3.7 megapixel, also with two sensors. On the back here on the Samsung Note 7 we have a 16 uh, megapixel backed by two LED lights and this also uh, is used as a heart rate monitor so you can actually, there's actually a sensor in there which measures your heart rate. Whereas on the back here we have a uh, fourth generation Sony 13 megapixel camera backed by a single LED light. I also know that this little line here is
is actually an NFC aerial, we were told. Now this this guy here, this is interesting, this is a fingerprint reader from Huawei, which we were told will actually work in any direction with your finger, and it will even work if your fingers are wet or sweaty or, I don't know, you've just come out of the shower, I don't know. It'll work if your fingers are wet. Now, the fingerprint sensor on the Note 4, we saw it before on the, on the Galaxy S5, and it's also been implemented here on the Note 4, and it's actually here on this button right there. And I'm pretty sure that you can only swipe downwards. So Huawei are quite uh, boastful with their new fingerprint sensor. They're saying that it's the best on the market right now. They're trying to up Samsung and what they have there on the Galaxy Note. Now, if we look in terms of um, the actual finish and the design of the, the two for a second, I'll just put the Huawei down. You can see that on the back here we have a similar kind of plastic shell cover which just <laughs> pops off quite easily as you can see. We've seen this kind of design from Samsung, uh, well, time and time again in recent years. I think going back as far as the Galaxy S2. So, nothing really too surprising there, although now we do have a solid aluminium band around it. So this is actually metal. This is, uh, I guess, in response to the criticism from the S5 which had a plastic band. But in terms of actually the, the feel, you can see it's kind of like a dimpled, slightly leather finish, and it feels okay, but it definitely feels like plastic. And that will have some critics, I guess. I, I've been a critic of that in the past myself. Now, if I just look at the Huawei for a second, you can see that this is a completely different kind of style. This is much more reminiscent of the HTC One series. It's one solid piece of aluminium, so there's no band or anything. It's a solid piece of aluminium with the, uh, the screens kind of floating on the top. Well, at least the panels in there and the, the core and Gorilla Glass is sitting right on the top there. So, for me, um, the in-hand field here, the Huawei, is excellent. It's absolutely, it's great. I was a big fan of the One and also the One M8, and I think Huawei, I wouldn't call them a copycat, but they've definitely taken the same concept and done a very good job. Samsung also feels all right. It's about 178 grams. This is a bit heavier. This is closer to 200 grams, but 198, I think. So there is a difference in weight due to the unibody aluminium design, but for me, this is the winner. Even though you can't take the back off, that's another downside. This is a non-removable battery, because over here we can get in here, we can actually remove the battery. In terms of batteries, you're getting here, you're getting a mammoth 4,100 milliamp hour battery on the Ascend Mate 7. But the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 is not, is not, uh, is not too far off, it's actually a 3,200 and 20 milliamp hour battery. Okay, in terms of thickness and thinness, I think they're pretty much the same. You've got a different kind of button configuration. Samsung have gone with the volume rocker here in the right on the upper left hand ledge, uh, edge, I should say, and the power button over here. You've got the, um, you've got a sensor right there. A uh, microphone, I guess. Oh, no, that's a, no, that's an IR blaster. Sorry, my apologies. This is the headphone socket right there. And you've got your USB port. It's a USB 2 port, by the way. Samsung told us they're no longer going to bother with USB 3. Uh, that's right there. And, of course, we've got this rather funky stylus, which can be added to the device, like so. Whereas on the Huawei, you've got both of the, the volume and the, and the power button on the right-hand side. USB in a very similar position. Headphone on the other side. This is a microphone sensor. No IR blaster. And of course, no stylus. So a few differences there. Okay, now let's talk about price. We don't know the final price here of the Galaxy Note 4. Not just yet, but let's be honest, it's going to be north of 700 US dollars. Now this guy, well, well probably seven, more than 700 euros, I would guess. That's, that's pretty, you can, you can call that for certain at this stage, I would say. Whereas the Huawei, this is the basic, uh, the more basic version, the silver version. There's also a black version, and that retails for uh, 499, so 500 euros. So a considerable difference in price. Um, I don't know, I think they're both pretty similar devices, but uh, I would tend to go with the Huawei at this stage. I'm quite excited about this. This has really impressed me so far. We're going to do a full review of both of these devices in the near future, so we can give you a little bit more detail about what the differences are and where the pros and cons of each device lies. Anyway, thanks for, uh, thanks for, for tuning in. This is Stu from Mobile Geeks. If you like this stuff, please subscribe to our channel. Don't be a stranger. Cheers. Bye-bye.